But uh, this this news about Christian McCaffrey and Leonard Fournette skipping out on their bowl games is a big story right now in the sports media world. Something I feel like I should address. Uh, I've been a big proponent. I've I've been someone that said college athletes should be paid. Uh, I I don't know why. There's there's almost this purity we treat college students. Oh, they're they're not pure uh, if they get paid while they're in college. It always just seems bizarre to me. But I understand it's expensive to pay student athletes, and I don't know if you're gonna pay your volleyball team. It, it's a it's a big issue on who you pay, who you don't. Uh, but at the very least, I'm a believer that. Student athletes should be able to make money at any point in their career. I don't care if they're at high school, if they can. If you can make a hundred bucks by signing a piece of paper and giving it to someone else or signing a jersey, then you that's the free market. You should be able to make that money and not be penalized for it. It doesn't make any sense. It seems unconstitutional to me that somebody could be exploited and God forbid they try to make a few bucks, especially during college when people don't really have a ton of money. And I think that's a big reason why Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey, two star running backs, one from Stanford, one from LSU, they're skipping out on their bowl games. Now, would they be skipping out if uh, LSU or Stanford were in the college football playoff? Of course not. But we have 40-plus bowl games nowadays, and... Does anybody watch any of them? I don't think so. The other day there was a bowl game on between... I, I was flipping through the channels. There was a bowl game on between two 6-6 six and six Division I football teams. Who is going to watch that? And the stadium was empty. It's, it doesn't make any sense. But I think there are ways to fix this problem. I, and I don't say you have to pay your student-athletes, but you have to... Give student athletes an incentive to stay in college. You know, not every college athlete is good enough to go to the pros. A very small percentage of them actually are. But if you play for the Ohio State Buckeyes and you're the starting center, you may not have a shot at the NFL, but you still could be very popular. You could still sign autographs and probably make some money that way yourself. I don't see the the issue in allowing student athletes to promote their own personal brand. I mean, they can go on Twitter, they can get followers. There's no reason why they can't profit off of it. It's I don't even think anybody is losing out on any money from these student athletes not making their own money off their own personal brand. Uh, but college football specifically, this system is fixable. It definitely is fixable, and I think it's moving in the right direction. There was an interview either this morning or last night with Nick Saban. He he said that once you start this college football playoff, these bowl games are becoming meaningless. Now, I've argued they've always been meaningless, with the exception of the national championship. The Rose Bowl is always exciting. It's often a great game, but unless it's part of the college football playoff, that's meaningless too. It it doesn't matter who wins the Rose Bowl. You get what do you get a bucket of ro- roses if you win or something? I don't know. You get a trophy. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of student athletes can put their skills on display, I guess, and help them get drafted. But for the most part, it doesn't really help anything. But that's why I think we need a 16-team college playoff, not 18s, 16 teams. And the reason why is because it's clear that the bowl games aren't going away, and you can't just get rid of them. But you can't have 40 of them. You really can't. That's just way too many bowl games. Uh, I don't even... Every every year the sponsors change, and they all sound ridiculous. The mainstay Independence Bowl, ridiculous. Nobody's watching that. But you have a 16-team playoff... You can fill, that would be eight games in the first round, you can put eight bowl games, make teams travel all around the country. If you are a number one seed, make it like March Madness, give the one seed an advantage and have them play in a bowl game where they don't have to travel very far. Uh, I'm not arguing that 
college football should expand to what sixty four teams or sixty eight team playoff like college basketball. Um, but the debate's not going to go away. Everyone says, "Okay, you turn into an eight team playoff or a sixteen team playoff." You're, it's the debate about who's the number four or five team. That's going to be gone. Well, we're still arguing in college basketball every year who the number sixty eight and number sixty ninth ranked team in the nation is every year. Is the number sixty eighth team in the nation going to win the national championship in college basketball? No, not a chance. But the number 16th ranked team in college football might. And it would completely change the game. Because think about LSU. They fired Les Miles uh, because he lost a couple games early in the year. He lost to Wisconsin the first game of the season. And he lost a fluke to Auburn. Uh, But the rest of the season under Ed Orgeron, LSU played pretty well. Uh, They... They played Alabama better than any team did all season. And if it were a 16-team playoff, I think LSU would be in there. Same thing with USC. USC stumbled out of the gate. I believe they started 1-3. and three. And by the end of the season, they are the hottest, perhaps even the best team in college football. But they don't have a shot. They don't get to play in the college football playoff. And even... I know we used to have two teams... Uh, in the postseason, it was just one championship game, and now we have a small playoff with four teams, but it's still punishing teams that improve, punishing players that improve, and because of it, you have Leonard Fournette, great running back from LSU, carried that team his whole college career. He's skipping out in his bowl game and focusing on the pros. Now, if he were playing in the playoff game, we know that wouldn't happen. And I think those are the two ways to fix this. I don't say you have to pay college student-athletes. You don't have to do that. That's going to be very difficult. I think they should be paid, but I understand why that would be a difficult transition, especially for some of the smaller Division I colleges. But at least allow them to make money off autographs if they can do it. Stop letting them be exploited and taken advantage of, you know, if coaches are skipping bowl games, then, and and we don't get upset about coaches skipping bowl games and moving on to other jobs. Tom Herman moving on to Texas, that happened right away. He signed with Texas as soon as the regular season was over with Houston. Nobody is blaming Tom Herman. But, God forbid, Houston's star running back decides to skip his bowl game to focus on the pros, and then we everyone would be all outraged over it. It just doesn't make any sense. And, you know, I think there isn't really anyone that oversees the NCAA, particularly college football. You know, players aren't represented. There's no union like there are in professional sports. So it's going to be very hard for something like this to happen. Uh, I mean, it may even have to involve the federal government. I mean, we, we don't know how how long players are going to be able to be exploited and not be able to make a penny off their own personal brand without getting kicked out of the league indefinitely. Uh, And uh, it just doesn't make any sense. So I think that's how you fix it. 16-team playoff allows students to promote their personal brands. You don't... They don't have to be paid, but if they can make money by signing autographs, let them do it. 